uh, René Spitz discovered very quickly was that the children in the foundling home who were physically so well treated but psychologically deprived uh, developed all kinds of illnesses. Their morbidity and mortality increased incredibly. Uh, they were also uh, very much retarded in their mental development. And so the name that he gave to those children was, uh, well, the disease that he described, he called anaclytic depression. So the next step in 1950s was, I'm sure all of you have heard of Harry and Margaret Harlow, and they were scientists at the University of Wisconsin, and they separated baby monkeys from their mothers. And of course, the results were just horrible. Um, these monkeys, without going into great detail, the monkeys that were separated from their mothers uh, became incredibly vicious, aggressive, uh, could not enter any kinds of relationships. I mean, it was just a disaster. In the late 1950s and early 60s, John Bowlby came along and he was a uh, English psychoanalyst. And he was really the first one who came up with what he called attachment theory and the maternal deprivation syndrome. And he described attachment as a lasting psychological connectedness between human beings. Oops, just looking here. Okay. Bowlby uh, rejected psychoanalytical explanations for early infant bonds, including the Freudian and early uh, object relations. Uh, and in his view, both failed to see attachment as a psychological bond in its own right than an instinct derived from feeding or sexuality, which was sort of the way that Freud and psychoanalysts looked at it for many, many years. So what is attachment theory? Attachment theory states that a child's first relationship is a love relationship that will have profound, long lasting effects on an individual subsequent development. Closeness to the attachment figure, in other words, closeness to the person who the child is relating to, provides protection and a psychological sense of security. So it is an enduring emotional bond characterized by a tendency to seek and maintain closeness to a specific person, particularly during stressful situations. Now, in, in, in actual scientific terms, we differentiate between bonding and attachment. Bonding is a pregnant woman's emotional relationship with her child, which starts, and this is important from my standpoint, which starts not at birth, but at conception. This is really important. This theory categorized the nature of a child's first attachment, either secure or anxious, and attempts to describe the impact these patterns have on subsequent behavior and relationships. So the reason that attachment and bonding is so important is because it really lays down the original kind of orientation that a person will have towards every other person and themselves in the long run. So a caregiver who is reliably available, this is important, and responsive to the needs of the child forms the basis for secure attachment, for competence in exploring the environment, for forming other relationships and for developing self-esteem. So you see, this really is the basis of a healthy attitude, a healthy personality. It is the absolute basis. So that's why it's so important. 
So bonding is from the mother to the child. Attachment is from the child to the mother or father. Okay, we'll just skip that. Mary Ainsworth in the 1970s was a American psychologist and she expanded greatly upon Bowlby's original work. Her groundbreaking strange situation study revealed the profound effects of attachment on behavior. In the following two decades, numerous other researchers elaborated upon this theory, which integrates viewpoints from psychoanalysis, cognitive psychology, systems theory, and ethology. And we shall not go into that. What I find really important is the parental personality and types of attachment. Parents who recognize the importance of relationships in their own lives and who can reflect on ways in which the past has influenced their development tend to raise securely attached children. So that, that is why it's so important to work with parents as all of you are doing, I think, um, and to make sure that they are as well adjusted as possible when they start having families. Because if they are not, that will obviously influence the mental health of their child. Oops. Um, just a second, we ran into a tiny problem here, okay. Adults who dismiss the importance of interpersonal communication, especially about emotions, often raise avoidant attached children. Uh, the ambivalently attached child can't make up his mind about what he wants. When he's held, he wants to be left alone. And when he's left alone, he clings to the mother. Both ambivalent attachments and avoidant attachments are types of insecure attachments, which are less desirable than secure attachments. But ambivalent attachment tends to be indicative of more maladaptive parenting and indicates a greater likelihood for attachment problems in the future. Adults with unresolved trauma or grief tend to rear children with disorganized insecure attachment. These children may have tendencies to dissociate, be hostile, and at times violent. So these are really the sickest children, so to speak. Adults who frequently reject or ridicule their children develop in them an enduring disposition to shame and low self-esteem. Consequences of disruption. In spite of the robustness of attachment, significant separation from a familiar caregiver, frequent changes of caregivers or ill health of caregiver may result in psychopathology at some point in later life. Okay, we're just gonna skip this. Here is a picture of uh, Romanian orphanages where children, once again, were uh, well treated physically, but had absolutely no emotional contact. All of them failed to develop normally. Many of them turned out to be retarded. Um, so we're just gonna skip that. Marshall Klaus and John Kennel, pediatricians in the 1970s, and they were the first one who found out that encouraging attachment through early contact, suckling and rooming in has been shown to reduce abandonment. So they were looking into uh, frequent cases of abandonment of young children or mistreatment, abuse of young children. And they found that mothers who were able to bond with their children after the children were born uh, did not commit abuse whereas mothers who were deprived of that opportunity were much more likely to be abusive or abandoning children. So Marshall Klaus and John Kennel are really 
uh, considered really sort of the, the, the first people who uh, put attachment and bonding sort of on the scientific landscape. The unique role of the mother. In the early weeks and months after birth, it is mother whom the child knows from their nine months of prenatal communion. It is mother whose very body, voice, smell, heartbeat, and essence is perceived as an, as, as an extension of the child's being. And it is indeed the mother in whose sphere this child will experience the most unperturbed, healthy unfolding of his self. Yet the standard hospital birth in America routinely separates mothers and babies. Fathers are important and can also be primary caregivers as can any consistent, loving, attuned adult. Okay, we want to talk a little bit about breastfeeding. Uh, breastfeeding links to an increase of ACTH, cortisone, noradrenaline, endorphins, oxygen consumption, energy metabolism. All of these changes are jointly responsible for the pleasurable aspects of attachment behaviors and social interactions. Breast milk contains omega-3 fatty acids, Children who were breastfed for longer periods of time showed, especially at 18 months, better physical and cognitive development. Okay, I need to move ahead quickly because we are running out of time. So the three bonding systems that I wanted to, oops, that I wanted to discuss with you are the oxytocin vasopressin system, the orbitofrontal system, and the autonomic nervous system. Here you have a picture of the suckling reflex. The infant suckling stimulation of the nipple sends messages to the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus, which instigates the release of oxytocin from the posterior pituitary into the circulation, leading to the contraction of smooth muscles of mammary tissues, which pumps milk from the breast. This reflex becomes easily conditioned to various behavioral cues, cues, cues from the infant. So oxytocin, of course, we all know, uh, promotes uterine contractions, ejection of milk during lactation increase. But what perhaps is less, not, less not well known is that it increases male and female social and sexual responsiveness. It increases caretaking in both sexes. In males, it energizes the gentler aspects of male behavior. Also, it has been found that it increases trust in humans. Vasopressin, on the other hand, increases male sexual persistence, such as courtship. In females, it energizes more aggressive aspects of maternal behavior for example, protecting the young. Low concentration of oxytocin solidifies social memories. High concentration of oxytocin impairs social memories. So it all depends on the actual uh, ratio of oxytocin to vasopressin. Both oxytocin and vasopressin aid in the release of end endorphins. So this would be a pleasurable experience for both the mother and the child. Oxytocin acts centrally to stimulate both branches of the vagus nerve. And as you know, the vagus nerve uh, supplies both the heart and the gastrointestinal tract. So now this is, this is the most recent uh, study on, uh, on attachment. And uh, this is mostly due to uh, a psychiatrist in a psychiatrist in the United States by the name of Alan Shore. And uh, he has found, and this has been widely accepted now, that the right orbitofrontal cortex is dominant for processing, expression, regulation of emotions, and also memory storage of emotional faces. So when the mother looks at a baby, 
like this. You're supposed to have a little movement here, but we don't have it, so we need to move on, okay? Um, this is what it looks like. There's mutual eye contact. Mom's radiant smile responds to the baby's smiles. And what happens is, is right brain attunement. So it is like two tuning forks, which vibrate to, in the same frequency. This is what happens with the right orbital frontal brain of the mother and the right orbital frontal brain of the child. So in attachment experiences, the output of the mother's cortical limbic regions, especially her right frontal regions, serves as a template for the imprinting of the infant's developing cortical limbic regions. The secure mother at an intuitive non-conscious level is continuously regulating her baby's arousal levels and therefore emotional states. And this is, this is probably the most important thing perhaps uh, that I will tell you about today. This again is a recent article by Alan Shore. At the bottom there, you see the spelling of his name. Uh, you should definitely look him up. This is in the Infant Mental Health Journal, volume 38. Um, and in it, he points out that significant neurohormonally driven gender differences are seen between male and female social and emotional functions in the earliest stages of development. These result from differences in sex hormones and social experiences, but also from rates of male and female brain maturation, especially in the early developing right brain. Most importantly, the stress regulating circuits of the male brain mature more slowly than those of the female in the prenatal, perinatal, and postnatal critical periods. And this accounts for the higher morbidity and mortality in boys as opposed to girls at every stage of life. So this is really new knowledge and it's very, very important. Um, so, the slower maturation rate of the male brain from the last trimester through the end of the second postnatal year accounts for the longer period of the development of social responsiveness and regulation of feelings in boys. In other words, boy babies' brains lag behind in development compared to their little sisters. This is reflected in the early relationships with their mother's caregivers. At 12 months, girl toddlers display a greater preference for interactions with caregivers. They make more eye contact and show more emotional empathy and interest in people than do same age boys. So if, mother for, if a mother, for example, has a girl baby first and then follow it up later, let's say by a year or two with a boy baby, and she compares the two of them, naturally she would, everybody would, uh, she will find that her boy baby seems less interested in her, seems to be less social. And she may think that there's something wrong with him because she compares him to the girl that she had. And this is not the case. It, the problem is that males develop more slowly in the right prefrontal area. Okay. And a few things about the autonomic nervous system, I think... I, I'm running out of time. Uh, may, may I have 10 more minutes? Okay, I'm not you hearing. You can anything. continue, Dr. Varni. We are yeah. eagerly waiting to listen to your extreme research. So don't worry. Okay. Okay, so I don't have to worry and I don't have to take tranquilizers, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so autonomic nervous system. Mothers who exhibit low levels of affect expression, in other words, low level of mood expression, uh, for example, depressed mothers who are generally withdrawn, will induce in their infants a state of energy conservation 
in which the parasympathetic system comes to dominate. Um, so the lifelong impact of postnatal depression, women who had postnatal depression reported lower relationship quality with their offspring, including those children who are now adults. The worse the postnatal depression was, uh, the worse was the later relationship quality. Women who had suffered from PND with a child and then in later life become a grandmother through that child form a less emotionally close relationship with that grandchild. This continues the negative cycle associated with postnatal depression as the importance of grandmothers in helping with the rearing of grandchildren is well documented. So it, it just goes on for several generations. It's not enough that just that, that the child is affected. It's also the child of the child that's affected into at least second generation. So these children will have low heart rate levels, low activity levels, feelings of helplessness. In terms of brain architecture, they will have increased parasympathetic and decreased sympathetic innovations of orbital frontal systems. As adults, they will have limited capacity to express emotion. They will be over-controlled and susceptible to internal, internalizing psychopathologies, in other words, depression. Intrusive mothers. Now, intrusive mothers, remember I showed you that picture of the mother smiling at the baby. Um, intrusive mothers are, mo are are mothers who uh, sit, let's say, with a child. And after 30 seconds or so, the child loses interest, starts looking around. And I wish I could show you this because in, in person. I don't know whether you can see me or not, but if, if a mother is sitting opposite a child, what she will do is take the child's head and move it to face her and say, look at me, look at me, why are you looking away? That's an intrusive mother. Uh, instead of leaving the child to sort of go at his own pace, uh, she interferes. So this, and she interferes because she's anxious and she's not sure of herself as a mother. And all of that plays into this kind of an anxious intrusiveness. So what that happened, then the effect of that on children is the overdevelopment of the sympathetic and dopaminergic excitatory system. So then what you have is adults who are likely to have impulsive personalities, inefficient capacity to regulate anger and distress. And also uh, another word for that is externalizing psychopathology. So they will act out their problems rather than experience them internally. Long-term effects of early caregiving experiences. Sensitive caregiving, which is what we want, is defined as the extent to which a parent responds to a child's signals appropriately and promptly, is positively involved during interactions with the child, and provides a secure base for the child's exploration of the environment. Observations of interactions between mothers and their children were collected four times during the children's first three years of life. This is a study that I'm referring to here. Individuals who experience more sensitive caregiving early in life consistently function better socially and academically during the first three decades of life. So you really can't ask for more than that. Um, I'm trying to move on. Okay. Um, so in, in, in summary, early caregiving, children's experiences with parents during the first few, first few years of life have a unique role in promoting social and academic functioning, not merely during the first two decades of life, 
but also during adulthood. Because individuals' success in relationships and academics represents the foundation for a healthy society, programs and initiatives that equip parents to interact with their children in a sensitive manner during the first few years of life can have long-term benefits for individuals, families, and society at large. So this is your job, ladies and gentlemen. This is what you have to create in India. Attachment theory is seen today as a regulatory theory where the primary caregiver acts as an external psychobiological regulator of the experience-dependent growth of the infant's nervous system. And since we have a little bit of time, I want to show you a beautiful little movie, if I can. Sure. Okay. I love this. This is my absolute favorite. This is from Brazil. I'll agree with me that this child is going to be very well bonded, very well attached. I, I wish that all children would be loved like this, the way these two parents, you know, surround the child just with love, lots of love. And uh, on that note, I thank you for your attention and goodbye for now. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. I think we will have a few questions. If okay. you'll be kind enough to, you know, answer. Yes, I would be happy to. Uh, so Ravi, can we take the questions? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, anyone would like to ask a question to Dr. Thomas, uh, please raise your hand and uh, the team will, uh, you know, uh, enter, make you enter the screen. Yeah. Hi, Gajananji. Hello. Hello, Gajananji, you, you raised your hand. Uh, you have you have a question? Questions uh, from anyone? Anyone can ask Dr. Thomas. Let's... I'd like to ask uh, yeah. in the meantime, uh, okay. Dr. Thomas, I uh, we have understood a lot about uh, child psychology and other things, but I still feel like, you know, uh, reaching out to people has been a real problem making people understand the mothers the families because it's all going around you know uh, round and round because domestic violence the stress in life the malnutrition you know the diseases in the mothers and families so they're all playing a unimaginable role in the future generations so apart from uh, child psychology, what else would you like to sort of concentrate on? Second important thing, the aggression in our future generations, which are there, the current ones, uh, what is it that is responsible? And how can we go about it? Well, yeah, I, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a complex question and uh, there are no easy answers to it. Uh, I think that social changes have to go hand in hand with many of the psychological changes that you and I are advocating. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to teach psychology to someone who is starving and doesn't know, you know where tomorrow's bread is coming from. Yes. So we, we, need to, we need to institute social changes. We need to make sure that mothers and, and parents in general, you know, uh, have, uh, have a minimum standard of living because nobody is gonna worry about psychology uh, if, if they have a hungry stomach. So I think the two need to go hand in hand. Uh, we need to make social changes and, as, uh, and gradually, uh, of course, we, we, can reach, we can reach middle class, we can reach middle class parents much more easily and so you know, that, that is certainly a place where we can have an impact. Um, I, think, I think every mother and father uh, want to have healthy children. And so if we can persuade them 
that in order to have a healthy child, you need to have a healthy pregnancy that really the health of the child starts at conception. In fact, it really starts before conception yes. because there's, there's a lot of research that shows, you know, that the health of the father, for example, uh, will affect uh, the health of his uh, sperm. And then it, that in, in turn will affect the health of the baby. So uh, for example, smoking before, uh, before conception by the father is not a good thing. And there's a lot of research on that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I, what I have found is that women are much more open to these ideas than men. And uh, certainly in, uh, in the Western world, you know, uh, my books uh, by and large were not read by obstetricians. Uh, they were read by their wives. And then the wives would tell the husband, here is a really good book, you should read it. And that's how we make progress, you know, one, one woman at a time. Um, I, I remember I was, uh, I was speaking in, I think it was, yeah, I think it was Holland. And uh, I was speaking to a group of obstetricians and gynecologists and um, when I talked to them about gynae gadgetry, which is, you know, all the amniocentesis and all the ultrasound and all those gadgets that uh, certainly Western obstetricians really love. Well, I was almost stoned. They did not, they did not like that. Um, but uh, with all due respect, things are changing. And, um, and obstetricians, I mean, you know, the ones that have come, for example, to this very conference, uh, by the very fact that they are attending this conference are already showing that they are open to some new right. ideas. So yeah. I think that there is, there is hope in that. I wanted to ask you another question, like, you know, if, uh, in India, and I'm sure all over the world, there is a huge culture, even non-working mothers will keep nannies for the babies. Now, do they really, I mean, uh, what is the impact? I know that there is a lot of research uh, which we have discussed initially. Uh, so can you throw some light on uh, there is a huge difference between a mother caring for the baby or a family caring for the baby and uh, with a uh, nanny coming and caring for the baby? Yes, you're quite right. And, uh, and, and I think that it's very important for the baby, especially the first I would say minimum first six months of life uh, to spend as much time as he or she can with uh, their mother rather than a stranger. Very, very important. Uh, because like you know, uh, those first nine months in the womb, the baby listens to the mother's voice. It gets used to the kind of food that she eats, to the kind of rhythm of sleeping and walk, waking all those things the baby gets used to. And so when the baby is born and suddenly he or she is exposed to a stranger, this is not going to be good. This is going to be very upsetting. Uh, it's like uh, you going to sleep in India today and tomorrow morning you wake up in Moscow. This would be rather upsetting. So it's the same thing for a baby, you know, when the baby suddenly loses uh, contact with her own mother, this is like, you know, very, very, very upsetting. And of course, the baby can't make sense of it. Uh, very often, uh, he or she will think that it's her fault, uh, that she has done something wrong and has been rejected by the mother. So uh, many, for many, many reasons, uh, I mean, no matter how good uh, that um, woman would be who, who looks after the baby, uh, she's a hired hand and she's not the mother. And so I would really stress the importance to mothers to uh, look after their babies as much as possible during the first six months of life. And if possible, the first two years of life, I'm very much opposed to daycare, uh, especially for very young children. I think that is a terrible thing to do to babies. And uh, I think it's really important for the babies to be close to their own mothers.
Any other questions? Yeah, there are plenty. Actually, they are waiting. I would <laughs> like to invite Gajanan ji uh, from Pune. Welcome, Gajanan ji. Thank it's you. wonderful to see you. Thank and you. Uh, I would like you to ask, uh, post your question to Dr. Thomas. Lovely yeah. to see you. <laughs> nice to see you to you, Jagdeep. Nice to see you, Gajanan. Nice I'm to carrying, see you. I'm carrying what I learned with all of you. Forward. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, looking at the Indian environment uh, about the bonding and attachment, how to increase that. The one suggestion we normally give it to the parents is that they should have a small prayer for their kids daily. That is while okay. they are in the womb and after a, a delivery also. Prayer is nothing but well-wishing uh, thoughts radiated by the parents and they will definitely get communicated to the baby improving bonding and attachment. So that is what I thought that I should share with you uh, pertaining yes. to this particular topic. <laughs> yeah, and, and just building on that, you know, I think, I think it's very important to send messages, uh, whether they are verbal or they don't even have to be verbal. Uh, yeah. But just thinking, just thinking about the baby while the baby is in the womb and um, talking to the baby, singing to the baby, all those things are very, very important because I also believe that really uh, communication uh, starts right at conception. And so yes. bonding and attachment really uh, have to start from the beginning. And so yeah. doing all the things that you have indicated and that I have added, all those things are sort of important ways of of, of connecting with the baby. Correct. We take cognizance of the baby right from its conception. That is right. Good. Yeah. That is good. So that Any brings me thoughts? music. Now music brings me to yes. Marina. Marina yes. is from Israel. And yes. Marina is part of our app and our team. Uh, she is a musician at heart. And, you know, she has developed music uh, for uh, ba basically for pregnant mothers. This music runs into... Uh, an, uh, neonatal care units, intensive care units. So, Marina, uh, I'd like some comments from you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Verney. Pleasure, pleasure uh, to meet you online. I actually would uh, describe myself as a world citizen because I studied in between Paris and Cambridge and the Hebrew University and um, uh, United States most of my life. But I did uh, study psychology and musicology, which is science of music, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and somewhere in my postgraduate studies, I combined. Why am I making this introduction? I'm also as a mother of, of three sons. So um, I'm very much aware, and I cannot agree with you more how important. I was lucky, fortunate, or let's say I was less uh, thriving for financial success, having five houses. So I stayed at home with my sons, with each of them at least 12 months. Once, uh, when I was uh, working in the nonprofit world in New York, I was basically booed and almost kicked out of the, of the board meeting of a huge foundation. I'm not gonna name it, <laughs> why? Because all of the problem of uh, drugs, uh, uh, depression, et cetera, et cetera, I uh, raised a simple question. I said, how about all of these funds that are invested in solving these huge problems you put into mothers being at home <laughs> with children? Because I found it uh, uh, shocking that you know, they have to go back to work after three months. Mm -hmm. I don't know right. how it's in Canada now, but anyway. So, but because we are all very much aware and I'm grateful to, to Dr. Jadip and, and some of the people that I, I, I truly, um, this uh, treasure that I discovered in Anger in New Delhi. Um, we are aware of problems and problems we face every day in watching the world we live in. What I'm trying with these beautiful people to uh, focus on uh, is solution. So solution through this is my combination that a lot, a lot of things can be helped. I don't wanna say healed or cured, but mm -hmm. definitely help uh, with music. Uh, mm -hmm. All of my work, 20 plus years, is based on science, which means every single detail that I may share and that I uh, presented in New Delhi by the kind invitation of Dr. Malhotra's and their clinic 
is based on a scientific uh, research. So I cannot agree with you more how it's important. So what I'm trying to share now here with all of these beautiful people is 15 to 20 minutes a day is building up, accumulative, right? And it creates huge change. I have thousands of children that I was working with in many uh, places around the world. You want to talk about peace in Israel now with working with children or depression or extremely, extremely important. After three months, we can already uh, start seeing uh, benefits, not to mention my my sons, which is another uh, uh, dimension, I think, today in, in a multi multicultural, multinational, and very turbulent world, extremely important is to expose, expand sonic horizon, as I call it. So when child, actually pregnant mother, is exposed to sounds of music from India and jazz and South Africa and Nigeria and uh, Norway and Georgian a cappella singing from men, something happens definitely in the brain in, in, in the entire cognitive process. We still do not know, even though neuroscientific research in the last 20 years has been expanding, we still don't understand how, but we know that it does happen. So for example, my three sons are trilingual, quadrilingual, we know as, as speaking as a native. And I, uh, you know, claim that this is big part because when they were babies, when I was pregnant, every day I had diaries. They were listening Marina? to music from different kind of world. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we have lots of questions actually. Uh, so I'm going to keep a webinar with you for, uh, for all our, uh, you know, members. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to invite uh, Dr. Anita Chaudhary. Do you have a question? If you have, please post immediately. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Thomas, I just wanted you to throw a little light on the cuddling, the right side cuddling and the left side cuddling. There is a very remarkable difference in emotional uh, development later on. So I wanted you to throw a little light on that. Yes, thank you. Uh, I didn't have time to go into it, but, but I, I usually do cover that. Uh, there seems to be a lot of research to show that the normal unconscious way in which uh, women hold their babies uh, to their chest is on the left side, close to the heart. And uh, any woman who seems to hold the baby on the opposite side, uh, research seems to show uh, that there is uh, there is some kind of a problem in terms of attachment and bonding uh, when when that happens. Uh, so when you notice that, like as an obstetrician or a pediatrician or a general practitioner or 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 a midwife, when you notice that, uh, that sort of should um, should should ring an alarm bell that there's something wrong with this uh, lady and with her parenting. Um, and, um, and, and one should really change, uh, the way the, the woman is holding the baby so that the baby should be close to her heart because the baby needs to listen to that because after all, it has listened to that for nine months and it has a very calming effect on the baby. Whereas if the baby is on the other side, it doesn't hear the heart sounds as well and uh, it just leads to complications. And there's research on that. And, and I can give you that reference if you're interested. Okay, there's another question with, from uh, Dr. Sanjana. She says that is uh, there a difference between child psychology between a preterm and a post age child in the same family environment? Okay, uh, is that a question? Yes. Is there a difference between the two, between preterm and a post-state or a normal uh, gestation? Uh, hmm. I, I think that um, it, it would really have to be judged on an individual basis. I don't think that you can generalize because there are so many other factors to take into consideration. Uh, like millions of factors you know is this a first you know is this the first pregnancy or is it a subsequent pregnancy first pregnancies 
uh, usually uh, take take long take longer uh, for the for the child to be born. Uh, there's nothing definitely wrong with that. Uh, I mean, the idea of 40, 40 weeks is just a statistical average. Uh, children and mothers are different, like all of us are different in many, many thousands of ways. Uh, so not every child has to be born exactly 40 weeks from conception. So some of them take longer, some of them take shorter. Um, usually, uh, there is a difference in terms of being born prematurely, uh, usually prematurity, but again, that's just a statistical average, does not apply to every person, but usually um, a sign of early birth is stress. If, if the mother is stressed, then there is an increased risk of preterm birth. Uh, if the mother, psychologically speaking, perhaps is afraid of giving birth, has some anxieties that she has not expressed, uh, then perhaps it might go into post-term. And that of course will influence uh, the health, physical and mental of the child. But like I say, one has to be very careful in terms of generalizations. And I think that each pregnancy would have to be judged on its own merits. Okay, Dr. Sadhna, uh, quickly ask your question, please. I have four more minutes, okay? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Dr. Sadhna. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, good evening, Dr. Thomas. I just want to ask you, the parents here are very busy this morning to evening in their jobs. So how can they give the quality time to their kids throughout the week from Monday to Friday, Saturday also? So they are very busy from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Then how they can give the quality time to their kids? Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> there, Is there some you know, minimum time limit? Like, yeah. Uh, I, I think that what we can do as, as physicians is to indicate what is ideal, uh, what, is, what are ideal conditions, right? Whether it has to be with diet, exercise, or uh, connecting with your child. Uh, we can set certain, certain ideal standards. And then depending on a person's circumstances, uh, they, they should try to meet that um, within what's possible. Obviously, like you say, if someone is working five days a week from nine to five or nine to six, uh, mm -hmm. they will have less time to connect with the child. There's nothing we can do about that. But I think what we can do is um, to emphasize the fact that when they are home with their child, when they are finally home, uh, mm -hmm. that they should pay absolute um, attention really focus on that child because that child needs their presence, needs engaging with them. Uh, like, like, like you and I need food and, and, and water, you know, it's, it's an essential of life. And so, you know, obviously we have to be practical. Obviously we don't want to make people feel guilty about not doing enough for their children. The important thing is to do as much as you can within the parameters of your existence. Uh, Dr. Thomas, uh, there's a very interesting question. Is there any research uh, happened on uh, the children born out of surrogacy and how do they actually develop? Well, um, <laughs> that's, that's a whole other subject, <laughs> surrogacy. Uh, it's a whole other subject. Um, it's, 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 a, it's very problematic from the standpoint of pre and perinatal psychology, because like I said, <clears throat> you know, we, we do realize, and there's simply no question about that, that those first nine months in the womb uh, are incredibly, you know, foundational for the psyche of the child. And so when you spend nine months with a surrogate mother, and then the baby is born, and 24 hours later, it is with a strange woman. I mean, how can that not be upsetting? Exactly. 
so wow. uh, and and it's the same and and the same thing applies to adoptions of course which is the same you know the same idea you spend nine months with a mother and then the mother gives you up for adoption and the, the poor baby doesn't know what what is happening yeah, yeah. Anita? so thank you very much Thank you very uh, one much. last question. There's one, okay. one person waiting for a long time. So I would request you for one last question. Okay, sure. Unmute I yourself. Can't hear, you. can't hear you. Dr. Anita, please, please unmute yourself, Dr. Anita ji. You are muted, Anita ji. Can you please unmute? I had asked my yeah. question. Anita, please. Yeah, uh, Dr. Thomas, I just wanted to, yeah. uh, many of the things have been clarified. Actually, we were talking about no crutches or no uh, daycare center, but it's just uh, we observed that I'm usually, I'm working in a public sector where the low socioeconomic people come to me. So there were a crowd having uh, domestic violence among the parents, the mother is working somewhere in the houses for sweeping and all. So we created a crutch type of thing, a daycare center, and we kept those kids there without yeah. the mother. And then we realized that they are developing better because the better we were giving them toys, we were talking to them, we were giving them many much of affection. So they were really getting uh, benefited out of it. So yeah. I think the thing which you jo just said that if parents are working and they find a good place to keep their children yeah. rather than keeping with a one aya at home, I think yeah. that would be a better uh, uh, consideration for the development of the baby. Yes, you thanks for that. Thank, yeah. Yes, thank you. That That's a very good point. Very good point. Yes. And it sort of takes me back to uh, the beginning of my lecture when I was talking to you about the difference between the foundling home and the children who were being brought up in prison. Oh, yeah. Because they were surrounded, they were surrounded by loving People. mothers. You know, they, yeah. they may have they may have been criminals. But they were still good people and they were still good mothers so yes thank you for your comments and thank yeah. you all it was a pleasure and hope to see you again yes thank, thank you. you dr thomas i thank wish you. you could have heard me also but anyway we are going to record this and i'm okay. going to send you my presentation because we have developed a very nice app to engage pregnant women uh, throughout pregnancy I've... with preconception and post-conception care uh, with music, diet, yoga, and everything. It, it's based on Garb Sanskar and also on fetal origin of adult diseases and child psychology. So yeah. I'm going to send you the presentation over a link. And uh, okay. thank you so much for your wonderful, wonderful presentation and your time. Thank you. Wonderful it was a presentation, pleasure. Dr. Thomas. It was a pleasure and an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you. So... Uh, thank you so much, uh, Doctor, for joining. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation. So, uh, moving ahead, uh, without uh, wasting time, I would like to invite uh, Doctor Jaydeep Malhotra ji, uh, a very well known with no introduction required. She is the current president of ISPAD and past president of ISAR and FOXI, and a great humanitarian, very passionate about providing uh, better health outcomes for mothers and babies. Welcome, Doctor Jaydeep ji. Please uh, enlighten us with your presentation. Thank you, Ravi, and uh, very good evening to all of you and everyone who's listening and all over the world because we are live on many pages and you know on many platforms today. Uh, I would say that this is our commitment towards future healthy generations. And uh, I must thank each and every one of you because you are our family who is going to really take this commitment forward. And uh, so I would say, like, you know, all of us gynecologists, especially, uh, the burden of maternal health is really staggering uh, numbers. And uh, it's unbelievable that out of the 140 million births which take place in the world, we have almost about 27.5 million births in our own country. And but we were like losing a lot of mothers to many problems, especially hemorrhage, sepsis, and uh, other things. But over the years, if you see, we have been able to bring this number down, which was uh, more than sometimes 400, you know, uh, in the 90s, and it has come down now to 113. But if you see, this has slowed down. So what is it? 
and our goal is 70 per 100,000. So we are really far away uh, from this goal, but it seems achievable if we keep on moving. There are two, three things which we need to understand that we have taken control of a lot of things, especially, you know, we are educating all doctors, we are educating women on how to, you know, uh, look after hemorrhage and prevent um, postpartum hemorrhage or antepartum hemorrhage plus sepsis and other things. But there are many other contributors to maternal mortality, which we have to also look into. Similarly, infant mortality, if you see, we were about uh, 34 just a few years back. Today, we are around hovering around 30, but we haven't really gone down much. So let us just face the fact that of all these 140 million births which take place in the world, almost about 27, are mothers are, 27 million mothers are undernourished, 57 million have anemia, 42 million have obesity, 22 million have hyperglycemia, and 8 million have hypertensive disorders. So they already have loads of issues. And if we look at the burden of non-communicable diseases in our country, this is a paper from Lancet, which is saying that India is becoming a hub of non-communicable diseases, which is hypertension, diabetes, obesity, and cancers. But what is remarkable is that it is coming at a lower age, one decade lower than the other Western world. The average age is 55 everywhere, and in our country, it is 45 or more than 45. And so that's what it needs our attention. We are the diabetic capital of the world. We have the maximum number of preterm babies in our country. And we also are the obesity capital of the world. We also have almost 27% of our contribution towards the tuberculosis in, of the world. And what we have to also understand is that 68% of our under five deaths are due to maternal malnutrition. Now that's a huge number. So we are really adding on and we have had history to understand that. Now, if you look at these studies, you know, which we have, I have mentioned a number of times from Gambia, when babies born in the harvest season or in the hungry season have totally different immune mechanism. Uh, story of Audrey Hepburn, because she was born when the famous Dutch hunger winter was on and she had all kinds of problems. She had anemia, she had respiratory illnesses, she had uh, depression and she had everything. And a lot of us, we studied that people, women who were born during that period and later on also, or who were there, you know, during the preconception period at that time, suffered from infertility. And the ones who were in the first trimester had obesity and heart disease, second trimester airway diseases, and third trimester diabetes and insulin resistance were seen in their babies. Now, nutritional deficiencies we have known for I think times a memorial now, iodine, folic acid, thalidomide, iron, calcium, and vitamin D and so on. But there's another major contributor to all this, and that is our endocrine disruptors in our environment or the daily things which we use. Uh, the plastics, you know, uh, they have all kinds of cosmetics and so many things at every stage of life, they can have a very different impact. So if you see here, there's a huge connection between adult diseases, pre-pregnancy, and prenatal exposures to these endocrine disruptors. Because all of them, whether they are environmental contaminants, plasticizers, plus pesticides, preservatives, sanitizers, we are using so many of them, you know, uh, this. So I'm telling each and every pregnant woman, please use soap and water as much as possible because this triclosan in the sanitizer can have a lot of connection with the baby having obesity, diabetes, thyroid disruption, neuroendocrine disruption, reproductive and fertility disruptors. So all these air pollution included are adding on to a lot of disease or the non-communicable diseases uh, in the world. So we may really need to understand that today women, especially the pregnant ones, they're dying because of these added problems uh, which are there in their lives. So what we understand today is that there's a fetal origin of adult diseases. So all these diseases which we may suffer 
or we may not acquire them later in life. They, the inception may start in utero. So a mother, what she eats, how she lives, what environment she is in, what kind of a thing she is facing in, like, you know, one in three will face domestic violence. Most of them don't eat properly. Uh, all those stresses, whether they are nutrition or otherwise, will bring about different gene expressions in the body uh, of the baby, and the baby can suffer from a lot of things later on. Like you can see here, example of these mice. There are ones, you know, this one is an obese golden coat, and this is the one. Now, which one is healthy? Most of you will tell me that this one is the healthy one. But actually, if I tell you, now this is the one who is obese, is prone to more diabetes and cancer because this is the one who has had uh, the methylation pattern, which was not really great. So epigenetics really plays a lot of role. So the DNA methylation patterns in our body also lead to a lot of gene expression. So if I tell you today that this has a link with lupus, cancer, muscular dystrophy, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, cardiovascular, schizophrenia, and bipolar disease, can you imagine how commonly you hear these names every day? And this is what is happening uh, to all of us. So the concept which we had was that we uh, inherit, we actually inherit more than our genes because many of these things you may not have inherited, but the epigenetics has brought these changes and which become inheritable later on. So you may not be born diabetic, but your poor lifestyle and your other exposures have made you obese and diabetes, diabetic, and now your baby can have diabetes and it actually affects the future two generations so can you imagine now the effect of genetics and epigenetics and that's what we really need to understand because all your destiny is not in your dna there is a lot of role on the lifestyle and the other things which you actually say, uh, you know experience during your lifetime now added to all this is poor mental health and that mental health especially during preconception to post conception and even later on can again lead to an increased methylation of number of genes and they can have a lot of effect on the baby and the future generations so we really need to now after listening to dr thomas and after listening to this we are now looking at a different approach to pregnancy treatment or you know to mother care or whatever you may say so let me ask you can we really avoid under nutrition because you know girls today they take pride in Ari, i don't want to eat this i i don't feel hungry i don't want to you know increase my weight in pregnancy and so many other things they don't really understand that all this is going to have a lot of effect on the outcome of this pregnancy so all these have associated uh, maternal morbidity and mortality plus poor outcomes as far as the uh, delivery is concerned and plus poor programming of the fetus and the children so undernutrition or overnutrition they are all dual teratogenicity which will have a lot of effect on the outcomes now all of us gynecologists this is my favorite slide all of us focus on and even the parents and in-laws and everyone focuses on antenatal care now if i tell you that even early antenatal care a lot of these women will come only after three months you don't go to the doctor even the educated ones also will say, don't go to the doctor before three months so if i tell you that even early antenatal care is too late because by the time you have between day 17 to day 56 the heart actually begins to beat by day 22 after conception the neural tube closes by 28 days after conception the palate fuses at 56 days after conception the errors of implantation especially you know the placental which are which play a huge role uh, in uh, preeclampsia and you know other hypertension and all they it's too late to prevent that and it's even also too late to restore any kind of allostasis 
So we really have to understand now that as gynecologists or as parents to be who are listening to me, uh, there is very important time to invest if you're looking at pregnancy. So let us look at the value of what time you have spent or what investment you have done in that period and the value. So if you're looking at periconception, it has the maximum value. Pre and periconception is definitely going to be the best. And then it slowly comes down to from preconception to pre-implantation to first trimester. And then later half of the pregnancy has hardly much value. So if you're really wanting to get pregnant, then all the parameters have to be good before three months before getting pregnant. So this is the impact of preconception care. So minus 12 weeks, meaning three months before you're planning to get pregnant to about eight weeks after pregnancy is the most important area of investing time and efforts on nutrition, on psychological development and many other things. Because this is the time which will influence the organization of the DNA, the epigenome, the mitochondria, the metabolism, the placentation, the organ development, and the gamete, embryo, and the fetus. So can you imagine now where to focus on? So if you're looking at pregnancy BMI, we know that there are a lot of things which can happen or go wrong when there is obesity in the mother because the whole structure of the egg and the embryos goes for a toss. This is what dietary fats do to the egg. Can you see? This is what sugars and lipids do to the mitochondrial activity of the egg. And this is what micronutrients will do to the impact of the DNA modification. So there are multiple areas where this is actually affecting. And it's not only the mother. The father also has equal contribution. Because if the father is overweight and if the father has a lot of other issues, then definitely the pregnancy rates are going to be high, uh, lower. And also the pregnancy loss is going to be very high. So we need to understand that the father's uh, health also is of importance uh, once a couple is actually seeking a pregnancy. Now, if the father is obese, then the offspring can also have impaired glucose tolerance test. So diabetes can come from that side also. Now, all these factors, whether it's nutrition, toxins, infection, smoking, weight, stress, and all, they all have an impact even on our growing embryos. There are a lot of studies which have been there, in vitro fertilization or IVF, which affect the embryo growth and also the future development. Now, let me look at another angle. Now, if there is hypertension in pregnancy, now what will happen? This, this mother is already high risk for developing cardiovascular diseases and cerebrovascular and kidney diseases. Can you imagine? So you already got a danger signal there. If there is gestational diabetes which uh, develops during pregnancy, then one in five will become diabetic in the next five years. If there's a preterm baby born, now that preterm baby will have a high risk of cardiovascular disease later on in life. If there is hyperhomocysteinemia, again, it is going to lead to a lot of these problems like neural tube defects and uh, so on. So what we have to understand is that these prenatal, perinatal and childhood factors have a definite impact on the adult health and the adult health risk. And these adult health out, uh, risk factors can have an impact on the future of the our progeny. So pregnancy is one nine months window of opportunity, which all of us gynecologists get. And even the mothers get. Where if you look into a lot of these morbidity factors, uh, then I'm sure our health and our health of our future generations is definitely going to be uh, much improved. So what are we looking for? We are looking for one high quality intervention, which is related to mother and child health services, which will make it possible to achieve several objectives with far reaching health and economic benefit.
Now, that's very important because I would say that all of us know all whatever I have told. But knowing is not enough. We must apply. And willing is not enough. We must do. So how many of us are actually doing it? That's important. And every time when we get an opportunity, we should not lose it. Because <laughs> these small opportunities which we get are going to give us very long-term impact on the health of our future generations. And we are the custodians of women's health. We are good doctors who are a bridge between science and society. We are the ones who are learning from the past. Garth Sanskar is not new. Dr. Thomas said that the child psychology, they started only understanding from 1950. Can anyone tell me when was Garth Sanskar brought in? Manu Spriti, 16th century. Can you imagine now all these understandings we've had from times immemorial? Our science and our um, understanding about, you know, human nature, disease, charak and all, you know, shushruta, all of them have been there. But what have we done? We've forgotten them. We have gone towards the West. And we are trying to relearn all those things from them, which is our own science, including yoga. Now, we, uh, my only aim is to all of you to inspire you that there is have faith in our own systems, combine them with the latest research and evidence and knowledge, and then amalgamate in such a way that we bring in the best in the world. And that's where all these things which we are looking at are going to have an impact. Now, uh, many obstetricians out of us have actually lost focus. We have become like prescription doctors. We no longer, in spite of knowing, uh, we don't use our practical skills and we don't really, you know, read or, you know, uh, make our, us understand the latest evidence. And many a times, um, I would say that our commitment is not to the disease. Our commitment is towards the human being who comes in front of us. And that is where I want all of you to be the change makers. So we need to focus on short, not short term only, but on the long term health benefits. So very small, small changes in our practice, which we will bring in, will actually have a lot of long term health benefits on our future generations. And that is what I really want all of you uh, to be the role models, to be our regional and community leaders, and to have all the focused goals in mind. It's not a only focused goals in antenatal care, but also a very holistic and dignified approach towards healthcare provision. We must understand that law, we are always blamed for doing extra you know, more cesarean sections. We ourselves are only lacking in preparing women for birth preparedness, for complication, readiness, and for, and it can be very easily done with a few minutes. If we don't have few minutes, we have the IMAMS app, which is now developed, you know, uh, giving all those services to these women. I'm sure today we are going to learn a lot on what women have understood uh, by engaging with IMAMS app. Plus, we need to integrate the maternal and child health care towards preventing NCDs and her overall positive uh, approach towards pregnancy. So this is what our IMAMS app is. It's an, a beautiful amalgamation of Garb Sanskar with fetal origin of adult diseases. And this is what we are really looking at. Now, what happens that women who actually are exposed to Garb Sanskar. Can you imagine now this is a very scientific study which has come up. They are, have very reduced stress and they have improved coping strat uh, strategies and the well-being of the mother and uh, the child is definitely much, much better. So the components of this incredible motherhood story are preconception counseling, antenatal care, birth preparedness, diet and nutrition, cosmetic care, immunization, yoga, exercise, music and meditation, bonding with your baby and bonding of the couple and the baby with the doctor and postpartum care. 
So these are the components which we have actually amalgamated in the app also. I have to thank Shivani Didi from the Brahma Kumaris who actually launched this and we have had her blessings. We have had blessings of Shiri Shiri also and we have had blessings of each and every one who is there. Look at our community. We started with this, about 500 of us in the beginning of 2018. Today we are a huge number of almost about 6,000 plus who are attached with us, but I'm sure this number is going to grow with the help of all of you because this is something which is going to have an impact on all of us, which is important. So our journey towards incredible motherhood is much, much more important than just provision of care. So here is a small clip from the film, which you can show it to your patients in the clinic <clears throat> for them to understand how important it is for them not to treat pregnancy as a disease, but a normal phenomenon. <laughs> Yeah, I think there is some issue with the audio of the uh, this particular beautiful film. So can you imagine now this is an everyday story in a woman's life who is pregnant. And the moment when once of the people, you know, who are planning to do go through a pregnancy, see this, their whole scenario changes. And how they look after this pregnancy is absolutely going to be different. This film is available on our app also. It's available on YouTube. I would request all of you to please utilize it. As we have an app, I'm sure Ravi is going to tell us a lot more about the app because this app is not only one small thing about pregnancy uh, problems. It is a lot more. It is a companion of a pregnant woman when you and I cannot be. So it has all the essential components uh, which are available on the app, whether it's diet charts, yoga, meditation, garb sambad, how to talk to the baby, uh, music. Uh, I have to thank Marina also for, you know, providing a lot of music, stories, expert advice. We do a meditation session in the morning. We do uh, ask me anything uh, in the evening and so on. Last, what are the outcomes? We want to really make motherhood a very blissful experience. We want the mother and the father to bond with the baby, which is very important. You already learned it from Dr. Thomas, how important it is for the development of the baby. So the mother and the father have to really bond and talk to the baby. Bonding with the couple, with the doctor and the hospital staff, very important again. If we want them to deliver normally and have lesser complications, this aspect is the most important, I would say. Allaying the fear of vaginal delivery. Now that's again very, very important because we know that cesarean sections have their own problems. Sensitizing many important aspects of the pregnancy and post postpartum period. And lastly, building future healthy generations. So that is what we are looking at. So what are the next steps? This is also a part of the agenda which I'm going to talk on, but let me just put them here. Continue public awareness, very important. Unless and until people have awareness, they are not going to understand. Engage with the government. 
or your administration wherever possible. Strengthen our fraternity. If we have a clear-cut understanding and clarity on how we want to do things, definitely then only we'll be able to provide good service. Reaching out to the expected couples through various means, various platforms, like you have digital platform and other through the app and otherwise. Building communities for group activities. That is what all of you are there for because you are my regional leaders and you're going to develop communities of doctors and patients and sensitize them towards this because this has to be a drive. It cannot be run alone by Jenny Malhotra. It has to be run by I, mom's family for all over the world. Talking to people of all walks of life. It's not only the poor or the middle class, everyone. Then integrating maternal and child health care systems, which are important. And lastly, but not least, commitment. That is the word, commitment towards promoting a better lifestyle and health. So I'd like to really thank each and every one of you. And I would say that if maternal and child nutrition and stressors can be optimized, then the benefits which we'll accrue will extend over generations. And this is where we should not lose an opportunity. We have to seize this opportunity to provide better care. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. Thank you so much uh, for such a wonderful presentation. So uh, we are going to have an open discussion very soon. And before that, I would like to, uh, in just 10 minutes, I want to summarize the experience of 60,000 pregnant mothers. Uh, most of them, they are consulting you. So in just 10 minutes, I would like to summarize. Uh, uh, exactly. You know. And Ravi also tell us, uh, I wanted to ask everyone if you could put it on the chat, how many of you have actually seen the app fully? Because if you have really not seen the app fully, then you will not have faith in that. So I would request all of you to see the app fully. And uh, Ravi, show us like what is there in that app. Sure, madam. Uh, how it helps. Yeah. Can you off the screen sharing, ma'am, so that I can share my yes. screen? Yeah. So uh, fortunately, we have some IMOMS users also here. Uh, so they would also love to share their experience. So I'm just uh, summarizing the experiences which we had so far. OK. So we also did some interesting study with uh, what is happening with this prenatal in interventions. Before that, I'd just like to give a small glimpse. So this is uh, the moment which made all of us Indians very proud. This is 2016 Summer Olympics. How many of you remember seeing this match? I was, you know, yeah, I was, I mean, yeah. So PV Sindhu, we wanted her to win the gold. I mean, we were watching this with full enthusiasm. And uh, unfortunately, we got silver, but we were very happy. But India only won two medals there. And I had a heating, heating debate with one of my friends. You know, the discussion is why US or Russia or some other country win most of the Olympic medals, but why not India? So then someone told me that, you know, it's all in the DNA. So uh, DNA that decides our capabilities and it restricts us. We Indians can't win. And uh, that had a profound impact on me. So I started thinking why DNA is everything. And then uh, I came across the teachings of Dr. Thomas Verney and many other prenatal and perinatal psychologists. And I came to know about Dr. Jaydeep Malhodraji's Adbhut Matatva Initiative, where I was fascinated to know about the epigenetics. The environment has a lot of impact and pregnancy is such a crucial moment which can uh, make many things possible. So uh, it is all uh, started this IMAM. So we, I'll just tell you what all in the IMAM app is and what is the impact we observed and what are, what are the users actually saying. So uh, first we have meditation and music inside the IMAMS app. We have guided mu relaxation exercises and these are completely customized based on the stage of pregnancy. For example, in the eighth, ninth month, uh, many women, they complain that, you know, they are very anxious to deliver. The fear and anxiety is more. So these guided uh, relaxing exercises gives them affirmation and strength to uh, prepare for their labor day. And in the second trimester, born with the baby. So there are, uh, you know, so many meditation exercises, exercises. 
and music we have different classical indian music ragas each suggested for uh, each uh, month of pregnancy there are n number of researches i i don't want to quote all of them but <clears throat> they say that you know they increase the confidence to deliver they decrease the perceived stress and they improve the quality of the sleep many of the imams users they they listen to yoga nidra exercise before they sleep i am a meditation practitioner for 4 years and i am listening yoga nidra every day we have so many meditators here i see dr anita ji practicing for more than 20 years so they are perceiving all this and is this real so we conducted a survey and uh, there is a stress scale it's very beautifully designed by a taiwanese doctor it is press uh, P- psrs scale which is the stress perception especially for pregnancy and we gave this questionnaire to pregnant women in the 15th week of pregnancy and also in the 35th week of pregnancy we observed that the pregnant women those who are practicing more than 76 minutes of mindfulness exercises that is din ka 10 minute they are uh, you know meditating and relaxing to some music in them uh, you know the stress levels have gone down i mean uh, not gone much higher compared to the ones those are not meditating or listening to the music and this uh, result was very very evident and also i mean many of your uh, you know clients would be complaining madam mujhe neend nahi aa raha hai this is very very common so many of the imams users have also complained the same so we uh, did the same analysis there is a very relaxing beautiful exercise called yoga nidra which not only pregnant women all of us can listen for a better sleep and this yoga nidra work wonders with insomnia and also sleeplessness so in the 15th week of uh, the pittsburgh sleep quality index is a scale which tells us about the sleep quality the higher the index uh, sorry the lower the index the better the quality the better the quality of sleep so we observed you know people in 15th week of pregnancy before using this yoga nidra exercise they have almost similar sleep qualities but in the 35th week due to you know uh, bodily changes the women those who are not practicing yoga nidra the sleep quality has deteriorated and in the women those who are practicing yoga nidra the sleep quality has improved tremendously and they thank every day for us and on an average every imams user they are spending 76 minutes on mindfulness see we all love when there is positive present around us right this is the emotional nutrition for us every day imagine you are treating so many pregnant women and they are coming just imagine they are smiling and being positive they are sad and always complaining how difference it will make on our health also so this this is the impact imams is creating and making people meditate listen to music every day we have beautiful collection uh, it's just buttons click it is very easy people from small villages are also able to access this this is also in hindi and uh, there are uh, some testimonials where people are saying you know uh, they i mean many people they also said that they are not able to feel the baby movements for some time and when they started listening the music suddenly they felt the baby kicks and uh, this is what they wanted to experience after after the end of a stressful day and there are many instances many users said that they couldn't sleep properly but these exercises are working wonders and within 5 6 days they are giving results making them to sleep very well and uh, dr thomas verney he spoke so many things about bonding and there are n i mean so many research papers which talk about the bonding between the mother and the fetus in the pregnancy reduces the chances of postpartum depression tremendously and reduces the crying and fussy behavior of babies at 6th week of 6th week of the baby uh, delivery and also um plays a major role in developing the cognitive abilities of the baby so this is the wonderful research and uh, we have a, a beautiful baby bonding program so in ayurveda we call it garbha samvad the mother should talk to the baby in the womb because uh, she is communicating all her emotions through her uh, neuro uh, neuro hormones so we have beautiful stories and beautiful talking exercises how she can talk to her baby and many women are amazed to know ki kya main itna baat kar sakti hu kya ye sab cheeze bata sakti hu kya it's all came to them as wonder so we have week wise in this week what we can talk to your baby we're just guiding them and they are talk, talking their heart out to their babies and there are so many beautiful qualities 40 weeks we have different different qualities we have so many moral stories 
and this is actually making the husband the family come along and you know they have their bonding time in the night they're coming listening to the beautiful stories relaxing and with such positive attitude they're ending their day and uh, there is a uh, very interesting scale called uh, maternal fetal attachment scale and we see uh, in the people who are practicing these baby bonding exercises uh, at least for 10 to 15 minutes a day and those who are not practicing at all we have seen that the attachment the perceived attachment of the mother shooted much higher uh, than compared to the control groups and this is definitely going to give all these benefits to the mother and the baby and 84 minutes is the time which mothers are spending on the baby bonding exercises every week and uh, there are brilliant brilliant reviews people are giving they don't even know these can be done right Ki, i can talk to my baby this is how i can talk to my baby and you know at the end of the day they are they are worried about some of their complication these few few minutes they'll you know create uh, give them spark of joy and make their day and that Ayman Zap is doing every single day. And uh, Namarda told that, you know, uh, Namarda shared a very uh, exp good experience. In the night, she has a routine schedule that she has to listen to the story. If she didn't on the phone and listen to the story, she get cue from the baby. The baby <laughs> asked the mother to come, mommy, <laughs> I want to listen to the story. So uh, she developed that uh, uh, thing as well. And yoga and breathing, and of course, uh, we strongly suggest the pregnant women to do yoga with their doctor's permission. We have simple, relaxing, completely safe yoga guidance come uh, on different weeks of pregnancies. And there are so many studies which spoke about increase in natural delivery, low birth weight uh, instances of reduce, and more instances of term delivery with these simple, simple practices for just 10 minutes a day. And uh, we have seen, I mean, this is a survey we have done. We have seen people, those who are spending, because we track the number of minutes they're doing yoga and walking every day. So we have seen those who are active, falling, stretching, exercise, and breathing. We have seen that there are more chances of normal delivery in those cases. And the birth weight is more than 2,500 grams in those cases. And IUGR has significantly reduced. This is not any one of us want uh, all these bad outcomes. So small 10 to 15 minutes of yoga if they are if their medical health conditions allows them i would uh, recommend uh, i mean request all of you to allow them to follow some physical activity and 163 minutes is the time which i moms to be mothers are spending per week on physical exercise they're walking they're tracking their health and we time to time remind them to follow all these exercises and we have seen instances with these practices uh, a mother with gestational diabetes and uh, with uh, obese, uh, with high B, uh, BMI, she was very happy to have a natural delivery at 39th week of pregnancy. And uh, these are actually helping them to stay healthy, active and connected. So uh, these are the experience of thousands and thousands of mothers. The team is so happy to receive so much positive feedback. We are spread all across the India and uh, around 430 cities. In more than seven countries, people are using IMAMS application. And a big thank you to all the doctors out there for recommending IMAMS app to uh, all the patients who are coming to you. And uh, second thing I would like to tell, so we created this app to make this easier. I mean, Dr. Jaydeep ji uh, has been proactively speaking about all these concepts. The vision is to make some call to action very simple. Aap IMAMS app download kar lije. You download IMAMS app, this will handle. So this is not only beneficial for the mothers, of course, but also beneficial for doctors. I mean, there are many doctors I see those are recommending. If they wish, I would uh, sincerely request them to share their experience of recommending IMAMS app to their patients. So this is actually helping them to reduce their time per consultation <laughs> and helping their patients to stay positive and satisfied with their practice. See the bar, both sara doctors ne bola, janjat katam ho jata hai. It is what they are saying because before coming to the clinic, she know that what an anti scan is and when why it is done from a very renowned expert. And uh, she will not bother you at 12 a.m. in the night. Kya main CD chad sakta hon, chad sakte pe chad sakte. So we have a community, they can post anything, and one of our experts are answering. And we have live sessions every single day. So this burden on the healthcare system is being distributed among all of us. And this is actually helping a lot and a lot of mothers. 
so definitely uh, the doctors those who are recommending imams have to the patients they said that you know the burden the number of questions average questions coming from a mother have reduced and they are so positive and they are uh, smiling and positive see 38 37 week mein aapko suddenly batana hai ki you have to go for a c section suddenly she panics and we proved that you know the stress bearing capacity of the mother has improved a lot with this mindfulness exercises so she will not panic she will be you know calm and composedly take that decision and uh, she will not bother you for very small things so uh, because we are all we are all humans and we are connected with each other others behavior has an impact on us as well and uh, while doing this uh, research we there are 36 questions which uh, which talks about stress and every question has a correlation ye kitna stress i mean how much amount this uh, factors to the stress can you guess what is the most important factor for the pregnant woman's stress contribution anyone okay it is going to the doctor absolutely how they how her doctor is treating her it's a close tie between two things one her doctor and how nurses are behaving during the delivery it's a very close tie husband sasuma everything comes secondary so you are the person who can you know uh, clearly have a huge impact on the pregnancy my so, god <laughs> yeah and so, so so that brings me that we it's not only the doctors but you know to educate your support staff also is very right. important absolutely ma'am absolutely i mean doctors have an equal impact as nurses and the supporting staff great point dr jvp so i mean this is a wonderful app which is loved by all the pregnant women i wanted to show you take this opportunity to show you because i know how busy you are getting few minutes of your time is really challenging so uh, we have you know clearly educated pregnant women on what happening what is happening in that week of pregnancy again we had we we took so many so many uh, help of so many of you to develop this content uh, what is happening in that week and there are so many activities what she should do subah uta do this uh, listen to this music you know do this meditation this is the diet chart this is what you can eat this is what you cannot eat we are breaking the myths and uh, if you if she wants she can get a diet consultation and uh, evening she can walk and she can track and there is a community any question she can pose there and in the night she can listen to yoga nidra and beautiful bonding time with the family listening to beautiful stories and talk to the baby exercises so entire day seven eight uh, you know touch points she is relaxed staying positive and very much connected with her baby so these are the sections and one of you were inviting to do a sunday webinar uh, a master class on one particular uh, pregnancy education topic last sunday dr anita ji wonderfully told them about how to handle this stress and this sunday dr kavita gautam ji is going to talk about sex during pregnancy and uh, so there are many activities month wise stack and one thing which i want to offer you personally so last few minutes so if you want to customize the app for yourself in the left thing which we have did for dr anita choudhary from varnasi so if i mean there are so many things which you have to repeat 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 tell the same thing to all your patients so few of your videos we can put it in the app and these videos will only be visible to your own patients we'll generate a code for you while downloading the app you can just ask your patients to use this code before they join they can see all this program they can follow all the meditations music diet everything and they can see your videos so this is uh, dr anita choudhary's imamza this is not imamza so this is a customization which you're offering free of cost we are team of iitians sitting here with dr jaydeep ji and a very senior life coach rajesh ji so uh, we are doing this because they feel so much connected to you and we want to maintain that and uh, if i mean there is so much education material dr jaydeep ji has made so many movies and there is so much education material we can directly courier you all of these things we can generate a code for you you just have to click on this link and uh, i'll send all this link to you i'll put it in the chat box you can just click on this link and uh, fill the small form and we'll courier everything to your opd you can just play those videos in your opd and there are educational material you can distribute to your the pregnant women those are cons uh, consulting and most importantly dr jaydeep ji was talking you as regional leaders please help us in promoting this concept and create a better better future generation we started this uh, inspired by 
uh, seeing stalwarts like Dr. Jayadeep Ji, Dr. Thomas Verney, and we wanted to do something for ourselves and for the nation. And uh, thank you so much for all the support so far. And uh, we look forward to uh, you know strengthen this association. Ravi, thank you so much. Uh, that was wonderful. Um, I I feel that it's not helping you or me. We are helping ourselves because that's important uh, understanding because when i say like if a patient comes and asks me uh, doctor what exercises can i do can you imagine in the initial part of my career i would stand up and i will do all those poses of uh, the yoga and exercise and demonstrate but can i do it every day for patient after patient it's not possible similarly like you know if stress is there then how how do i do it? so we've tried actually uh, to each and every one of you it has nothing to do with either jaydeep malhotra or ravi or anyone else it is it has everything to do with how we have to connect and make a bond with our patient so that the doctor patient relationship improves the patient and the future generations are healthy we can customize it to whatever you need uh, this discussion was basically to understand from you that you know uh, whatever we this has this app has taken us two years to develop to reach this stage and we are constantly evolving we are, uh, we already have an app in english we have already have launched one in hindi now we are going to go into regional languages and also uh, international you know uh, languages so uh, and we have a lot of advisors from all over the world who are joining in who are seeing merit Uh, marina is sitting there i know that she is going to contribute jazz music for on which she has done a lot of research uh, for our mothers and you know babies to be especially even the ni nicu babies and all who thrive very well when they listen to this music so we have experts from all over the world who are actually doing research so i would uh, now look at all of you as our regional leaders we want a community of doctors uh, who would connect with at least 25 or 30 doctors in their uh, you know surroundings and educate them on what we are learning uh, ourselves so all those ppts videos films uh, you know references blogs whatever we are creating we are going to pass on to you because our aim is nothing except to improve the condition or be the actual custodians of maternal and child health and i want each and one of you so we are going to make a community of the patients and also community of the doctors so i want commitment from all of you we are going to uh, have an e magazine i think we have the first newsletter uh, with us uh, ravi so let us release that Marina, would you release the letter for us uh, virtually? Uh, yeah. so can Can you show us the newsletter, the first one, Ravi? If yeah. you have it. Yeah, sure, doctor. Sure. And we also have blogs which you can pass on to your patients. We have videos which you can show in your clinics. You can, you know, the sky is the limit. I, Anita is here. You can see her on the screen. She did an amazing class master session. on techniques of breastfeeding now that is something which we have to explain to each and every mother whether she delivers vaginally or uh, cesarean section and my best friend's daughter delivered very recently and she was asking me she herself is a doctor husband is a doctor and every what is the first thing which worries them doctor is the milk yes, enough <laughs> will i be able to feed now all those little small small questions and they add so much stress to these young girls who are delivering this was an amazing beautiful uh, class which uh, dr anita gupta took she is a trainer for breastfeeding for the country so thank you anita for doing that then we had another very master, master session from dr narin malhotra what to expect in the labor room so a uh, absolute labor room was created and then each and every step was explained to the patient and in match the feedback was unbelievable so this is of our first uh, e letter uh, which will be releasing 
today and you are going to all receive it very soon uh it's going to come to you weekly uh, and uh, i have to thank uh, all of you we have got amazing contributions as far as the blogs are concerned uh, dr sadhna has sent one dr lavlina this is the one which we have published uh, just uh, this week uh, dr lavlina is a fantastic fantastic obstetrician from delhi and she works in uh, rose walk hospital and uh, she herself is a uh, very very keen uh, yoga and herbal life instructor and a wonderful gynecologist and she has contributed with the day i told all of you within two days her blog was here similarly the next one which you will receive is from dr sadhna jaiswal and we have many more in the pipeline so which will keep on you know sending you can forward them you can read them whichever way you feel like uh so this is it and now my next uh, question to all of you is you can post it on the chat box we will be looking at it uh, about how do you want to go ahead what is it that you would like if you have seen the app uh, what is it that you would like to add on to the app uh, i would like all of you to make some videos so that you know we can keep on changing the videos in the app and some new faces some new thoughts and all those things keep on coming Uh, on the app so that patients relate with you also and to the new people because otherwise it becomes very boring if you if the same person keeps on talking all the time uh, on the same things so uh, i just made the initial one but now the floor is all yours the whole app is all yours you can you know you just tell us and we will do it for you and uh, we also want it to reach out to as many people because it gives you evidence based good information protocol based next will be the next step or in this is going to be strengthening the clinics so we are next now building up the whole thing is ready but we are building up now to reach out to you that what changes you should do in your own clinics what you should add on what protocols to take on so that you have a clinic which is providing very holistic approach to pregnancy because that also adds on and that will mean strengthening your staff and also the support staff so we are going to do a lot of these activities and we are going to now make incredible motherhood clinics also so um, if you have any questions please go ahead ravi can you see in the chat box if there's something i would like to yes, have okay. to Not answer yeah marina yes, please go ahead sorry for interrupting you at that time uh, my apologies no no, no. i but, uh, i you know we had limited time with dr thomas and you know how passionate about uh, uh, everything what you do i am so <laughs> my apologies i totally resonate with this uh, but i i um, the, the excitement of my uh, contribution to to your work and and uh, ravi's uh, app is i would really love to see it i know india and i got to some numbers and you made a great presentation as of you know why uh, uh, regrettably there are so many uh, issues uh, 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 pregnant mothers face there but you mentioned uh, which i love i would love to see in first stage involvement of governmental bodies and uh, entrepreneurial people who will endorse ie fund we are all volunteering now and doing pro bono work but if you really want to do it on a professional level it has to be funded and you have to bring a great team that's going to support so that's my first dimension that could be done locally in india too because i do believe that it could be a great model example and i shared sorry i'll just take 30 more seconds to say uh, some of the scientists colleagues that i work with and i shared always on rainbow hospital is india was mentioned so many times regarding covid-19 the way how they treat the patients research publications unbelievable things which you do not here if you follow only one kind of a media so to come back to imams map to going on a second stage would be how you scale internationally is to have this different kind of international support 
raise uh, awareness about Indian science, entrepreneurship, and, and engineering uh, success throughout the world, which unfortunately is not known. So I, whatever I can contribute in is also mm -hmm. on the third little detail, I'm willing and I can talk with Ravi, uh, whoever is a member of the team, how we could incorporate perhaps my U-Muse, which is classical music science-based program with the research for additional help with the, with the yeah. presentation. Yeah. Thank you, Marina. I, actually, we are looking for funding right now. It is only self-funded. And in fact, we have been at it for like, you know, two years. So it has been uh, a tough going. So what we did was that we <laughs> launched a premium uh, version of the app where we are doing master sessions for, uh, you know, and so we are charging very minimal. I think it's peanuts. Uh, Ravi, how much is it uh, for the premium version for nine months? Yeah, so um, are, it, it's uh, a very small amount. Yes, doctor. So we are charging uh, 399 rupees for the entire pregnancy as of now. For, uh, for the entire nine months. That's like five dollars. Uh, and it's uh, it's yeah, it's not even five dollars. So that's what we have started doing because we need to sustain ourselves till we get a good funding. But a lot of people are really interested in us. So uh, I'm, I'm sure that in near future with uh, all of you, uh, your good wishes, we are going to soon find a funder. But in the meantime, I would say that suggest the premium version because premium version 300 or 400 rupees does not make any difference to uh, the patient. She is going to get the app for almost uh, nine months plus. If they want, we have also introduced now a monthly version. So sometimes, you know, people come in in the fifth month, they don't, they think, oh, why should I pay 400 rupees for, uh, which was meant for nine months in four months only. So we have now come up with a monthly version also. So which will also be very uh, little amount, maybe I think about 100 plus something. Right. So, uh, so this is how we are trying to sustain ourselves. But I think, I am sure I, we are fighters, we are committed, we are passionate, and I'm sure uh, we have no personal agendas. Our agenda is only to improve the health of the women all over the world. So I'm sure it is going to uh, do very well. And thanks to all of you. I have a few questions and a few suggestions which are very good. Uh, I'd like uh, to all of you to note and give me suggestions also. There is Dipali. We need the app to be downloaded in the pre-conception period so that the app should have one whole section on pre-pregnancy counseling. Dipali, we are already doing it. So uh, you will get it very soon because that has been uh, on the prime on my list. Dr. Madhu Gulati has said, which is again a wonderful suggestion. Is there any correlation with pregnancy and plants therapy? There is. And uh, I initially in my talks always used to say like, you know, even the plants need love and affection to grow and the positive vibes and similar is with babies. And if you're looking after the plants well, uh, they definitely contribute very well. So you can contribute. She wants to contribute. Uh, I know that she is a very avid gardener. I have lots of plants from her in my own house, especially the bonsai. So thank you, uh, uh, Madhu, for this. Uh, Dr. Manisha is saying that she's taking antenatal classes for the last 15 years. So, Ravi, we can utilize her for the antenatal classes because, uh, again, we need more, you know, inputs into it, but it has to be all scientific. Uh, next is... Uh, Yes, this is also very nice. Uh, Ria has said that I want you to suggest something specific for mothers who are going to be mothers for the second time. <laughs> now, that's also important because, uh, and Ria, we are going to do that. Some special stories, tips to build up good bond between their first and the second child. And just like, you know, so that's again an excellent uh, suggestion. We will definitely uh, take that up. Doctor, actually, Ria is the user of uh, iMums. I, I see some users here. I really don't yeah, know where that's... they got to uh, know about this news. They join. It's glad to see them. Uh, so we have uh, Dr. Manju Sheri. She is saying that I already have a video on the journey of mine. 
नाइन मंथ्स गर्भ संस्कार हाउ टू सेंड इट टू यू मंजुश्री विल गेट इन टच विद यू एंड वी वुड लव टू हैव दैट प्री कंसेप्शन लॉट ऑफ पीपल हैव सेट सो न्यूज लेटर इज देयर then uh somebody wants dr sadhna wants to share her experience of giving meditation to all pregnant women sadhna you are most welcome please develop that whole part of our app and also maybe sure, you could do sure. uh one uh, master session uh i would love to do that premium yes. members yes yes dr jaydeep ji uh, to meet you in the asuog i took the help of dr sadhna <laughs> she helped me yeah. big crash uh, bangalore asuog yeah, yeah. <laughs> But so, uh, any other India. suggestions which I have missed out, and I, what I want all of you is that you know, please on our um, on email either to Ravi or to me, uh, just uh, send what you would like to do. If you want some videos to be made, yes, uh, Anita, you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to add, like uh, obstetricians are only looking after the six weeks also, postpartum. Yes. so that six weeks should also be taken care of the female how to take care with the exercises with the care of the post delivery period as well as yes. breastfeeding so we are including so all those six yes. weeks at least should be included for the i moms i have a yes uh, definitely I, i can tell you that we are already working on that dr rosa has asked uh, that can, uh, is there telemedicine rosa telemedicine is already there on the app a uh, lot of these uh, patients ask for you know consultation with their doctors who are there on our app and uh, we arrange uh, these consultations for them i almost get like two three consultations every day yeah. so this is how it works and this is through the app so a lot of people who want to connect with you uh, they can connect through the app and uh, you can ask uh, ravi to help you with that Yeah. um i in another thing which i wanted was ravi let us con- create a community of our doctors and because we have done so many sessions for our doctors yeah. like uh, i don't know whether we have time today and whether rajesh ji is going to do meditation for us is rajesh ji there uh unfortunately he is in dear doctor uh acha so we, we we can have the community of doctors and uh, like you know we did art of living course we can have meditation we can have other sessions for our community of doctors uh we either it could be done on the app or we can do these zoom sessions uh with them uh in fact you know a very focused meeting is going to happen um, i think we were supposed to do it today but when Tom, dr thomas werney uh agreed to do the talk i had to postpone it a little bit so we'll ask you another time uh then we are going to come out with a proper list of the jobs which are going to be allocated to each one of you who are passionate about women's health if there are any other suggestions please tell me i think i can see yeah so doctor with your permission i wanted to read out my mail id and phone number so there are yes two things uh, we can i mean immediately start with your help one a customized version for your own practice so that uh, your patients can see your own videos so that is and second we want to send you all the educational material uh, by courier to your um, uh, practice so please please uh, i i shared a link with in the comment section i'm sharing it again uh, and you can directly reach me as well can you please note my email id it's ravi r a v i ravi at the rate p r u w o pruvo dot com and uh, my number is uh, 7658977717 and so very me and everyone else i i i see a lot of uh, you know comments posted on the chat box that i am doing garg sanskar i am doing uh, yoga uh, for our sessions for our patients what i would like to say is that uh, it's wonderful to know that so many people are following uh, you know all these practices uh, the most important thing which i would like to say is that if we follow uniform practices because each one will have a little different approach so if we follow uniform practices then the research which will come out and the data which will come out of it is going to be phenomenal so i would suggest that your own versions 
with a little modification if required can be incorporated in the app and then please use the app for your patients and you yourself can sit with the app on the screen in your clinic and guide them through so your personal touch is also not you know missed out and plus the app is also being used and if the patient really wants to go back and then you know see again uh, she can have a reference because you can't keep on repeating it and people don't learn it in one day so i would say that please uh, feel free to use our app and our services whichever way you want to improve your quality of life and definitely the health of our future generations uh, so that is my uh, humble request to all of you jaydeep ji uh, can we have one of the doctors maybe dr indu madhusudan ji or dr anita choudhary ji to share their experience they have been sure sure i would there. love to yes yeah. please dr indu ji are you here would you like to share your experience or uh, any other doctors uh, if you have been recommending and observing uh, the pregnant woman consulting you using that would you like to share some of your experiences what have you observed indu ji can you hear yeah dr anita choudhary ji would you like to share Are they there or they've logged out? There are, there are many. I can see. I mean, in my notice, uh, any other users of IMAMS here uh, would would like to share their experience. I saw some. Maybe we may be confused. Yeah. Achala ji, yeah. Please. I just need to share that uh, today's lecture by Dr. Varney was really very nice, and I have recently finished a study on psychosocial stress in pregnant women. Mm -hmm. and i found you know 10% of the women who apparently didn't say anything about their stress when we applied the pss score we found 10% of them had this stress and they also had an outcome like preterm labor hypertension and you know uh, low birth weight so i think it is very important for us doctors will not we can add to the and uh, care why we are dealing with the yeah. so thanks for your thoughts achala ji thank you so much yeah. so are we having some feedbacks i can uh, tell you you know uh, a lot of stories which have happened in my personal experience uh, but i was hoping to hear you know a lot from all of you so yeah, I, uh, yeah. please please go ahead uh, no no i was thinking dr indu was there i just checked yeah, if she is there are, then i'm not able to video on my screen doesn't matter Sorry, dr indu i'll just it doesn't speak. matter you can talk we can right. hear you indu uh mr raj modi ji can you make us dr indu ji as panelist hello hello yes 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 uh, dr indu madhu dr indu uh, i have made yeah 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 dr yes, indu ji made, please share made. your experience yeah. dr indu ji is consulting with cloud9 in bangalore uh, she has been recommending it to so many people that i first hi hi dr indu ji uh, hello uh, good evening everyone good evening madam uh, dr good evening Jay. yes so uh, this i have been uh, I, this session was very nice very wonderful i loved all throughout and i am really passionate uh, uh, about uh, this app because it is such a holistic approach towards uh, pregnancy and pregnancy care uh, from the beginning from the time uh, ravi has met me i am myself also an art of living devotee a volunteer and i have been practicing all this from uh, many years so uh, i have seen lot of change in myself so i thought okay this this platform this garbha sanskar is so wonderful so nice uh, and that it should be reaching uh, all pregnant women also so from i think past one and a half two years i have been sincerely telling all my patients to and i mean uh, uh, download this app and please follow all the techniques that they tell and i am i i see that patients are very happy 
one of the patient was so happy that she, she also wanted to give her own experience share in the form of video. So um, also I would say that once uh, patients follow this, I see that definitely the uh, other, uh, 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 what shall I say, any other complications, you know, the especially the BP or sugar, I have been seeing very, very less of it in, in my pregnant patients. Uh, and uh, it, it has a lot of immense benefit when it comes to usage of this app on their mind. And yes, it, it helps them to have uh, go through their pregnancy so smoothly without much of difficulty. And, and they are so blissful. So, exactly. yeah. So I think, yes, each and every pregnant woman should uh, follow this app to handle her uh, mind, to handle her stress. This present generation is extremely stressed about each and every situation when it comes to pregnancy. They want to <laughs> want to know about every small little things and they take it so seriously. I mean, they think that they're taking care of their pregnancy, but, you know, but they are actually uh, getting too, uh, uh, what shall I say, too passionate or uh, they, they want to take care of every small little things. So I think everyone, every, every one should, uh, every pregnant woman should uh, uh, use this app. It's extremely beneficial, ma'am. Thank you, Indu. Thank you so much. And you know, I have been listening to all these Ask Me Anything sessions uh, by all our experts, celebrity doctors who are here. And all of you have, you know, had amazing contributions, especially during this corona and lockdown periods. We had so many stressful uh, pregnant women who are having all kinds of issues. So I'd really like to place on record my sincere thanks to each and every one of you. Ravi, one feedback from our uh, master session on uh, the labor room. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we had like about four uh, women who were just in the last phase of their pregnancy. And every time when, you know, I would say that, you know, you have to deliver normally. No doctor, no doctor. My friend said this, my friend said that. And, uh, you know, it's very painful, this, that. And um, when we did this master session, after that, in the next week itself, they come back and they say, Doctor, you know, we were very apprehensive. We don't know what happens in the labor room. You exactly showed us what happens. It is nothing. It is like, I mean, I can just walk into the labor room and deliver. So, you know, their apprehensions are also very small, small things. And sometimes you we are not able to apprehend what is happening or going on in their mind. And the kind of interaction which we have in the antenatal period, the antenatal consultation cannot be more than three minutes to let's say average maximum 10 minutes. So how much can you explain and examine and everything? So there are lots of things which need to be addressed, which we are taking care that the app addresses. And you uh, and then you can spend your quality time. If you are seeing 50 patients, you will be able to see 100. And plus, all the patients get the benefit of all the education you want to give them. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. So, Doctor, going. Any other suggestions or? Uh... Uh, so, somebody has written that I agree. Guided breathing techniques can really help during pregnancy and in labor. And Astha is saying, would you like to share your feedback by speaking to all the doctors? Yeah, so I, I was asking Astha, I mean, she's one of the users I noticed. So I was asking if she wants to share. So yeah. I'd like to thank each and every one of you. I think we're going to close down right now. I'm going to soon call for an action uh, um, meeting. Uh, maybe in the next uh, week or maybe two weeks rather, I would say after the 15th of August. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to prepare all the list. You also put your thoughts together, how you would like to contribute or you know bring about changes in the app. Go through the app, please. And wherever, whichever area you would like to be seen or talked about, you're most welcome. It's all yours. So thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you so much, doctor. And please do recommend IMAMS app to all the pregnant women who are consulting, uh, consulting you. And uh, you can uh, reach us. The my coordinates are here. Uh, please feel free to reach us, and we'll send all the education material to your uh, uh, 
clinic as well thank you so much dr jaydeep ji for this wonderful words love you and very soon we are going to have a very great personality on board with us in this month itself god willing yeah sure thanks everyone uh, we are looking forward uh, for the continued support bye